We've drawn Oasis A located at the origin of a standard XY coordinate system, and then we have Oasis B located 25 kilometers due east of that point. We've labeled that 25 kilometers here. Now, the camel starts from Oasis A, and it walks 24 kilometers in a direction 15 degrees south of east. So you can imagine a camel following a straight line trajectory traveling in a southeast direction as indicated by this green vector. And this angle right here is going to be 15 degrees. Then the camel decides to turn and walk 8 kilometers due north. So we have another vector right here showing the camel traveling due north and that distance will be 8 kilometers. We have labeled that vector or that trajectory V2. And then what we can see is the camel ends up right here. So this little point is going to be the final position of the camel. But we need to figure out how far that camel would have to walk in order to reach point B. Now we've labeled that distance with a third vector, and we're calling that V3. Now, here's the key insight. If we take vector 1 and then add that to vector 2, and then add that to vector 3, then we should end up at point B, as indicated by the diagram. Now, point B itself can be indicated by a vector. So, for example, if you started at the origin, which is where Oasis A is, and you drew a vector from that point all the way to point B, that vector right there would bring you to point B. So, in other words, what we're saying is the sum of V1, V2, and V3 would equal that purple vector that we had just drawn. And so maybe we can just call that vector capital B. So this is sort of the key equation. But what we need to do is organize this information about the vectors into a table. So let's take a look at that. OK, so here is that table. What we've done is listed the three main vectors along the left column. And then we also put in vector B, which ends up sort of being the overall resultant trajectory if we were to go from A directly over to B. And what's really important in this table is we have to fill in the X and the Y components. And you probably have learned in your course that the X component corresponds to the unit vector I hat, and the Y component corresponds to the unit vector J hat. So we're using that notation as well just to get you acquainted with it. But again, we have to fill in the X and Y components of each vector. Now, let's consider that purple vector that projects directly from point A over here to point B. We'll put it back into the drawing so that we can adequately see the X and the Y components. Now, hopefully we can understand that that purple vector extends exclusively along the X direction. And therefore, because it's extending exclusively along the X direction, the Y component of that vector would actually simply be zero. And then the x component of that vector would be that 25 kilometers, because that was the distance between points A and B given in the question. So we can fill those in pretty easily. The next easiest vector to ascertain is vector 2. Now remember, vector 2 was the one that was projecting straight up in the northward direction. And because it's going straight up, then there, the x component of that vector would, would be entirely 0. So there is no x component for vector 2. And in fact, all of its trajectory is in the y component. It was that 8 kilometers that was going in the northerly direction. So we would fill in positive 8 for the y component of that vector. Now on to vector 2, which is the trickiest one. Now you probably have learned that when vectors are at angles, you're going to have to use the cosine and the sine in order to get the x and the y components. And that's very true. Just take note, and this is very important, Whenever you're using the cosine and the sine, what you really want to do is measure your angles from the positive x axis. So for example, we can see that vector 1, v1, is pointing in the southeast direction like this. Now, when you learn to measure angles in a pre-calculus course, you probably learned that when you measure an angle in a clockwise fashion, then that angle is actually negative. So it's important to understand that this 15 degree angle is actually negative 15 degrees. So therefore, using that angle, we can find the x and y components. So for the x component, you simply take the length of that vector. And remember, the length of that vector was 24 kilometers. And you multiply that 24 kilometers by the cosine of that angle, which again is negative 15. And then for the y component, you take the length of the vector and multiply it by the sine of the angle. So that's why it's really important to measure angles relative to this yellow highlighted 
positive x-axis. You want to make sure you measure angles in that manner. And furthermore, if they go clockwise, then they have to be negative. So pick up your calculator, do 24 cosine of negative 15, and you'll get about 23.2. And then also do 24 times the sine of negative 15, and you'll get negative 6.2 approximately. Now right now we don't know the x and y components of vector 3, so we'll just say v3x and then v3y. But again, the key insight was that vector 1 plus 2 plus 3 should equal vector b. So what this means is as follows. For the x component, we're going to add these three x components and set them equal to 25. And then for the y components, we do the same thing. We add these three and set them equal to 0. So maybe we can come down here and develop the equations as follows. So we'll have for the x component 23.2 plus 0 plus v3x is going to equal 25. Now you should be able to easily solve for the x component of vector 3 and when you do so you would get 1.82 approximately. And now we'll do a similar exercise for the y components. We'll take the negative 6.2, add 8, add the y component of vector 3 and then set this equal to 0. And again this should be a relatively easy equation to solve so you'll add the 6.2 over to the other side and then subtract the 8. When you do that, you get negative 1.79 approximately. So those are the x and the y components right here and here of that vector that we labeled v3 in the diagram. So that's this vector right here. Now, we don't want the individual x and y components of that vector. We want the actual length of that vector. But that's pretty easy now that we have the x and y components. Consider one final drawing here. What we can do is just draw an arbitrary x and y axis. Now, the x component of vector 3 is positive 1.82, so it would project along the positive x axis. 1.82 meters. The y component is negative 1.79, so it would project along the negative y axis. And what we're looking for is this length right here. This is basically the resultant of vector 3. We can see from the Pythagorean theorem here that vector 3 squared would equal the x component squared, we'll omit the units for clarity, plus the y component squared. Notice it doesn't matter whether you call the y component positive or negative really because you're going to be squaring it. So we can pick up our calculators and we can square both sides or both quantities, so the 1.79 squared plus the 1.82 squared, you get about 6.51, and then take the square root on both sides, and you can see that the overall magnitude of vector 3 is 2.55 meters. So that 2.55 meters is going to be this distance right here between where the camel left off and then Oasis B. So the correct and final answer is 2.55 meters.